Hey guys, Dylan Tommy here. Just kind of hanging out with the Bashardi tonight. This guy's looking great. He's doing much better as far as getting along with his tank mates. Uh, the Julia Chromis that I had added to this tank. Um, there's three of them in here, and uh, they've diverted his aggression a lot. I mean, he still does chase them around and uh, darts for them every now and then, but several of them have been really comfortable down here on the substrate. Now let's watch him for a little bit. And sometimes you'll find him, them, uh, you know, being chased by him, but for the most part, he's been cool. He's been, uh, he's been okay with them in the tank. I notice these fish have kind of developed their own territory, you know, and they stay clear of him, but uh, it hasn't been so aggressive. I mean, I haven't lost any of them. And like I said, there's three of them in here. The other ones are a little larger. I notice they don't hang on the substrate, but about mid-level over here somewhere. I don't see, I don't see the larger guys right now but the larger of them hang out on this side in these shells. I think he may have chased them up into that dark corner just now, and that's why. Plus, when I entered the room, I kind of spooked the tank, so uh, I gotta give them a little bit of time to chill out. But I am gonna keep rolling. We'll uh, take a look at some of these other tanks, too. What I uh, did want to update this evening, which hasn't got much updates, unfortunately, uh, is the Crebensis fry. Um, I actually think that these Crebensis are spawning again. And uh, he's got a new cave back here, and I'm sorry, but it's very tough to look back in that cave. But uh, he's been doing his thing in there with the female, and uh, just from their behaviors, I can tell that there's a new bed in there, and we're likely to see new fry in the next several days. But if I can give you a look at uh, some of the existing fry. Oh, there's one. There's a little guy, and he's getting very big, too. Let me see if I can go real slow and give you a look at this little fry here. Oh, here comes Dad. I guess that's one of the larger albino crebensis fry. And like I said, they uh, dart around, and they get in between the rocks, and they, you know, find their, find their hiding spots, so... I do believe that this this oops, this first batch of uh, Crebensis fry will be okay, even if uh, you know a second batch comes along right away, which I, I do expect. Because like I said, I, I think they're spawning right now. This guy's pretty big too. He's got to be what two, three weeks old by now. I'd have to check the video. When I approach the tank, they kind of head to the rock straight and into the back. But when they come out to feed there, they're fairly, fairly decent size for only about two and a half, three weeks old. And I'm kind of striking out here because I don't see any. But once they come out, I mean, they're albinos, they're bright, they're larger than you'd expect. So you, you see them right away. But like I said, I am kind of striking out. But that's okay. I won't bore you to death not looking at Crebensis fry. We'll keep going with the update. Um, one thing I did want to mention just in the planet tank, look at my second runner. Now this is the second one and it's all the way across the tank. I've kind of tucked it underneath this here and uh, I have it weighed down right about where that sword is. There's several swords that were growing off the first runner. If you see, there's a little bit of a weight hanging on that stem there but yeah I'm letting that uh, second sword runner kind of grow out and do the same thing the first one did and we'll see we'll see if I can get the, the lush uh, Amazon sword growth um, on this long stem you know feeding off the mother plant I mean this is the, her second runner that's feeding off the mother plant I'll tell you this sword right here has done fantastic and as old as it is because its roots have been allowed to uh, kind of dig into the substrate and uh, 
you know, utilize the nu nutrients beneath the soil. And you can just see in the size of the plant. I mean, that, that plant looks great. And you look at the ones that aren't kind of feeding off any nutrients from the soil. And they just deteriorate in size, you know. Same kind of nutrients, they're feeding off the stem because it's still attached here. But just as not as much. Just not, you know. I got this crypt. This crypt was uh, just a root, a rhizome, and I kind of had buried it in the substrate. I don't even remember when, and I just got little crypts coming up. Look, there's one there. There's one there. I think that's great. Oh, there's my little ram. Hey, buddy. He's going to be my boss once he comes up, I'm telling you. He's just smaller than the females right now, so it's tough. It's tough for him to uh, assert his dominance. Oh yeah, there's the planted tank. Yeah, like I said, this guy's in this hole and uh, he's spawning again. I know they are. They're both in there. And they're guarding it big time. So, expect another Crebensis from spawn. I think I'll take a minute and check out my Peepa Ferrave. Um, his tank has had some maintenance in the last couple of days. And he's just happy to see me. He's always happy to see me. This guy's great. cleared off some of the debris and uh, you know some of the dead plant material that was kind of building up down here on the substrate I also tried to clear out a lot of the dead uh, snail husks just because I mean the, the bottom of the tank is littered with uh, old snail husks so I mean I got as many as I could and uh, you know tried to clean out as much of that debris as possible but in a small tank like this with um, you know small filtration I try to keep as much of the the good bacteria in the tank as possible you see all this surface area on this side of the tank which is just covered with uh, you know debris and uh, nitrifying bacteria I mean that that portion of the tank there um, is just as important as the foam and any kind of biological uh, media I have inside the, the prime bottle but yeah, I've been having fun with this little uh, five gallon tank. Run it, and running it on air and just uh, letting Ravi live in here by himself. He's been growing up very nice. I wonder if his size would uh, be a little better if he was, say, in a 10 gallon. But uh, I just don't know. I just don't know because he's so healthy and he does so well. And he's ready to eat too. I haven't fed him today, but he does have some crystal clear water because of the water change. All right, buddy. We're signing off. I guess I'll keep rolling. We'll check out the Africans. We'll go into the bedroom and we'll check out the Mbuna. I noticed that uh, Mr. Man's been digging a little bit this evening, or this afternoon rather. You see this side of the tank, he's got his hole. Um, I had pushed a little bit of stuff back in and look how much he had uh, hollowed it out. I mean, it's down to glass, so much down there. Um, same thing on this side, it's nuts. What's up guys? Check out Nubs, he's doing so well. He's been so healthy, he hasn't been bullied in some time. And uh, his tail growth hasn't been uh, great at all, but he looks like a more he healthy, happier fish. You know, his scales look better. He's still at the bottom of the order. He's beat on often. He's just, he's not nipped, you know. But things are cool in here. The way I have the scape right now, um, they can't just get from one side of the tunnel to the other anymore. It's kind of broken into three pieces, which becomes three different territories for three different fish. Uh, I notice that this little scape down in here, um, is completely the erratus and uh, they, he can no longer get through here and through this tunnel and uh, into this area which is pretty much Mr. Man's hole and uh, this whole dead center in the middle of the tank only runs perpendicular um, you know back and forth and doesn't run you know along the tank 
so uh, only certain fish can kind of get in that hole. And I noticed dividing up these, uh, you know, rockscapes, these rock holes, uh, specific to certain fish, uh, creates a dynamic in the tank, and it creates a, you know, a suitable territory for them, and it kind of keeps the peace. Like I said, the Aratus has all this territory on this side, and he knows it's his. And uh, the same thing with, you know, the Demason eye, which will be just as happy getting in here. He's probably one of the only fish that could be happy in that little hole. And uh, same thing with Mr. Man, who's just hollowed out this entire uh, chasm down here. And uh, my, my, uh, my tugboat and all the other fish that uh, are lower down in the order will be happy right here on this pad. This is where Tug is, right on this flat surface here. He certainly can't fit underneath. He'd get kicked out of there by Mr. Man anyways. But uh, Tugboat's constantly hanging out on this flat pad here. The scape's looking really rich lately too. They kick up a lot of uh, crushed coral when they're digging and uh, you know, spit it all over the tank. Let me give you a shot like this. You had a whole pile back there where Mr. Man has a, you know, dug it out from one of his holes and spit it out on top of the rocks there. Definitely one of my favorite tanks. Just because, uh, you know, the dynamic in their social hierarchy. Not to mention the beauty. I mean, check them out. Even nubs, poor guy. I guess that's a benefit too. They're real hardy fish and can take a pounding. beasts all right guys that's my fish room update definitely appreciate appreciate you hanging out I'll keep you tuned in keep you updated I'd like to show you those crevences fry like I said um, I will shoot an update video where I get a good look at them and uh, I can share them all with all of you you guys have a good one peace